All right, welcome to CS4510, and this is 13-1, and today's topic is on the Cook uh, Levin Theorem. So let's talk about polynomial time reducibility uh, to build up to it. Uh, let A and B be any languages. Uh, we say, and it's written as A is polynomial time reducible to B if there exists F uh, such that F is computable and this is important and runs in polynomial time so f is represent is a computable function is representable by some turing machine and that turing machine takes a polynomial number of steps in the input so if there exists some function f such as that such that f is computable and runs in polynomial time uh, such that w is an a uh, if and only if f of w is in b f is the f is called the polynomial time reduction I think I messed this up when I was discussing uh, mapping reductions for undecidableness, but I will not make the same mistake here. Here, you may think of this as re reducing from A to B, and the direction of this symbol indicates hardness. So if you write A less than or equal to P, B, you can think of this as B is harder than a or a can't be harder uh, than p than b so this uh relation is sort of a hardness relation so then if a can't be harder than b and if b runs is decidable in polynomial time then that should imply that a is decidable in polynomial time which is actually true so if a is polynomial time reducible to b and a b is in p so b is decidable in polynomial time that implies that a is decidable in polynomial time proof let M decide uh, B in poly time uh, and let F uh, be our reduction from A to B. So consider the machine N, uh, which is going to Compute, it's going to decide A in poly time. So N takes on input W. So it's going to compute F of W and then run M on F of W. So this step takes polynomial time because F is the polynomial reduction. M on f of w takes polynomial time because we assume b is decidable in polynomial time because b is in p so m runs in polynomial time then we're going to output uh whatever this out outputs so n decides a in poly time w is an a whenever f of w is in b. This is by the fact that f was our reduction from a to b. So m accepts f of w whenever w is in a. So here's the definition of np hard. So 
we say L, which is just some language, is NP hard if uh, for all A in NP, uh, we can reduce from A to L. and p complete we say uh, l some language again in sigma star is np complete and i might write this as npc just to be short if l is np hard and l is in np an NP complete problem, you can think of it as a, unanimous, a unanimously elected representative of the class NP. Wherever the languages that are NP complete go, so do all the elements of NP. To directly apply that, if uh, B is NP complete and uh, B is in P, uh, then NP is a subset of P. We already know that P is a subset of NP, so this would actually imply uh, that P equals NP. So suppose uh, a B is NP complete and a B was decidable in polynomial time. Since B is NP complete for all L in uh, NP, L is polynomial time reducible to B. So then we have a polynomial time reduction and B can run in polynomial time. That gives us a decider for every L immediately. Which runs in polynomial time. So we took every language in NP and we just pushed it into P. Another immediate application of this is if uh, B is NP complete and B is polynomial, polynomial time reducible to some C, and that implies then that C is NP complete. So given any NP complete problem and some other problem, and if we can relate them with a polynomial time reduction, we can show that this other problem is NP complete. We can sort of build up several NP complete problems this way. Oh, also it must be true here. Uh, C must also be an NP. So how do we prove this? We just use uh, composition of polynomial time functions is going to run in polynomial time, right? So if for all L in NP, it's true that L is polynomial time reducible to B and uh, B is polynomial time reducible to C, that implies that L is polynomial time reducible to C, which would imply then that C is NP complete. So given this, I haven't even given you any NP complete problems yet. Let me give you our first one. First, let's talk about what Boolean formulas are. A Boolean formula is a string over uh, knots. Sometimes we denote these as bars. Uh, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, variables, or operator in the AND operator. So for example, uh, x1 AND x2 or x3 AND x4 or something. This is a Boolean formula. We say uh, formula is satisfiable if there exists some assignment of the variables to make the statement true. Each variable, by the way, is a Boolean. It's a 0 or a 1. 
there certainly do exist Boolean formulas which are not satisfiable. Consider um, x and not x, right? This will never be true if x, so if x equals 0, uh, not x equals 1, so 1 and 0 is always going to be 0. So this will never this will never be true. There's no assignment of this one. This is not a satisfiable boob. This is not a satisfiable boolean formula. What's cool about this is there's really only three operators. There's a not, there's an or and there's an and. That's really it. But that's enough for us to describe a huge class of problems. For example, we could talk about equality. We could say x or not y and not x or y. So this, I claim, is a, is a Boolean formula, which is true if and only if x equals y. So if x equals 0, then this clause needs to be true because we're ending all these clauses. So this, so if x equals 0, that would imply not y equals 1, which would imply y equals 0. So here, x equals 0 implies y equals 0. Similarly, if x equals 1, then this clause is going to contain, uh, not x is going to be 0, so this is going to contain a 0, and we want this clause to be true, so that means y has to be 1. That would imply that y equals 1. So we've sort of encoded secretly here an equality operation with just ands, ors, and nots. Boolean formulas are quite powerful. So our language is going to involve this. We're going to, we're going to, it's called sat. Sat is equal to the set of Boolean formulas which are satisfiable. So it's the encoding of a Boolean formula, and we usually use phi to denote a uh, Boolean formula such that uh, phi is satisfiable. What is the Cook Levin theorem? It says that SAT is NP complete. What does that mean again? Every language in NP is polynomial time reducible to SAT. So now let's actually let's prove that. So uh, for all L in NP, L is polynomial time reducible to SAT. All right, so now let's prove it. Step one, is SAT in NP? Yes. Our certificate is just a satisfaction, which can be checked in polynomial time. This is going to have some ands and ors or whatever. The certificate is just going to be the assignment of variables. We plug them in and we compute the ands and the ors. It's therefore runs in poly time. It's done. The certificate is just the answers, and we're just seeing if we can grade it in polynomial time, right? So SAT is in NP, yes, too. Now we're, we're going to prove that every language in NP is polynomial time reducible to SAT. Let L be in NP. So there exists M to decide L in, let's say, N to the K time. For some K. M runs in polynomial time. The proof idea is we will uh, construct some Boolean formula uh, such that uh, the Boolean formula is satisfiable if and only if M says some W is an L in uh, poly time. Phi uh, will be built from M and some W and this construction will take uh, poly time. So we're going to build a formula from the machine in a word and that formula will be satisfiable if and only if m accepts w. Uh, and the construction of this, the the construction of our boolean formula will take polynomial time. So consider what we call a tableau. A 
which is a which is a table. Looks kind of like this. Uh, so it's basically just an, an Excel spreadsheet, uh, such that the rows are gonna, the start and end row are gonna have these hashes. The first row is going to contain the initial configuration, so Q0, W1, dot, 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 WN, and then there's going to be some set of blanks. And the, the blanks are going to account for the maximum amount of space that this machine could use. So the first row is going to contain the initial configuration. We're going to define it so that the second row contains the second configuration. You run the machine for one step and so on, and hopefully the last row should contain the accepting configuration. So it'll say QA in it somewhere. Because M runs in polynomial time, the size of this table is going to be, come on, it's going to be polynomial. The depth of the table is around n to the k. Now, here's a, a sort of aside, a corollary. A machine will always take more time than space. Why? At each step, uh, at each step, uh, time goes up by one, always. Space, not necessarily. Space is reusable. Time is not. You cannot go backwards in time. But space, you can just say, I'm done with this, reset it, I'm just going to write over it. You can reuse space smartly. You cannot reuse time. How can you write four symbols in two steps, right? So the space is, has to be strictly less than the time. So because the time is n to the k, this is also at most n to the k. So let uh, the symbol, this is uh, the variable in our Boolean formula, x, i, j, s equal 1 if uh, cell of our tab cell of our tabula i comma j equals s and then s here is in it's either a symbol of is one of the states or it's uh from the tape alphabet or it's one of these end markers so our boolean formula is going to be the and of four parts it's going to be the and of uh, something called q cell the and of something called q start, the and of something called q move, and the and of something called q accept. And I'll detail what each of these do. So q cell is going to be, q cell informally says there is one symbol in each cell of our tableau. The way this is logically written is going to be as follows. It's we're going to say uh, and over for all uh, elements in the cell. So that's n uh, to the 2k. At least one variable is turned on i comma j comma s so this says at least one variable is turned on for each cell and at most one variable is turned on so how's that i'm going to write that i'm going to say s so s comma t or in uh and i'll just for shorthand i'm going to go ahead and say uh I'll call it C is equal to Q union, gamma union.
So the first part says that one variable, at least one variable is turned on for each corresponding cell. So if any of these is true, then this clause here internally is true. So this says at least one is turned on. This says at most one is turned on. For each pair of variables, at least one has turned off. Both, no two can be turned on. And this is pairwise, right? So this says there is exactly one symbol in each cell of our tableau. So you have greater than equal and less than or equal to. So, so you have at least one and you have at most one. So if x is less than or equal to one and greater than or equal to one, that implies that x equals one, right? So that's what Q cell says. Q start says the first row is the initial configuration. So this is just uh, a big and. We're going to have like uh, x of 1, 1, hash, and x of 1, 2, q, 0, and x of 1, 3, w, 1, and x of 1, 4, uh, w, 2, and, right, and then x of uh, x of 1, uh, n to the k, uh, pound, right? So it's it's going to look like, right, because if you recall the first row in the table, it's going to be hash q0, w1, dot, 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 wn, a bunch of spaces, uh, hash. Right, same. So q start just says that the first row is the initial configuration. Q accept says that the accept state appears somewhere in the table. So how would I write that? I'm going to say uh, it has to show up once, so one i comma j less than equal to into k of x i comma j comma q a so at least one of these is true somewhere in the table the accept state is exists q move basically says uh for each uh two by three window of our tableau is legal according to delta of m. So according to the transition function of m, each 2 by 3 uh, sub table of the tableau is correct. Now I could define this formally but it would be really messy and a waste of time, and I kind of don't care enough. You could imagine we did this similarly to the way we described the tiles for the post-correspondence problem. So, for example, illegal would be uh, something like uh, A, 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 B, A, right? So what this implies is in some configuration, the string A, A, A is there, and then immediately following A, B, A is there. That's impossible without the tape head moving over it. These two would occur in a single step. So you need the, the tape head has to pass over it, right? So something legal could be like, uh, let's say we were at A, Q, I, uh, B, and we wanted to, uh, let's say we read B, we want to write an A and move right. So that would give us Q, J, A, A. So we read A, excuse me, read B, write A, move, move left. So this would be, for example, a legal uh, cell, if this was exactly how M operated. So the claim here is if the first row is initial 
configuration and every two times three window is legal that implies that each row is a legally following configuration of M on W from the previous row. So a, a configuration would only not follow from the previous one if there was some illegal window. So now let's argue the complexity. So can we construct uh, phi in poly time? Well, first let's estimate the size uh, by its pieces. Recall that phi is equal to Q cell excuse me, phi cell and phi, uh, what are the pieces? Phi start, phi move, and phi accept. So the size of uh, this statement is going to be the size of these. So size of Q cell, uh, phi cell, is going to be, there's a constant uh, size piece for each, there's a constant size formula for each cell in the tableau. So this is like uh, O of n to the k squared, which is equal to O of n to the 2k. Size of phi of start is going to be, if you recall, this is just saying that the first row contains the initial configuration. So this is going to be O of n to the k, because that was the width of our cell. Size of q move. So we have a 2 by 3 window for each 2 by 3 window in the thing. So this is really like n to the k minus 2... Uh, I'll say approximately n to the k minus 2, n to the k minus 3, which is still O of uh, n to the 2k. Right? And then q except just loops over the whole table to find an except state. So this is going to be, excuse me, q phi except is going to be uh, also O of n to the 2k. So then this is going to be around the size of n to the 2k. So the size is polynomial. That doesn't say anything about the time. But because the size is polynomial and the actual formula is very repetitive, there's lots of uh, copied and pasted pieces within the thing. Given that we have a polynomial size, we can compute it in polynomial time. Each of the components of this formula, they differ only like in the indices and things, right? So uh, time is somehow O of n to the k. So the time is around the same. So we have our first NP complete language. Now, if we want to show another language is NP complete, we don't need to do this very complicated reduction. We can just reduce to SAT. That will make things much easier. 